Rudy Garland once sang a trolley car song that had its background in St. Louis in the days of the great World's Fair. Many people even today have a sentimental regard for the old trolley lines of St. Louis, but this was not our first form of city transit, not by about 40 years. The first real transit vehicle to operate on the streets of St. Louis was a horse car. If there weren't too many stops along the way, a horse car could negotiate the flat stretches of the North Broadway line at an average speed of six miles an hour. Six miles an hour is a mile every ten minutes. And many rush hour motorists will remember rainy or snowy rush hour periods during this past winter when it took at least ten minutes to drive the mile stretch of Market Street from 12th to Jefferson. Or the mile stretch of Gravoy from California to Grand. On the average, most of us undoubtedly make better time going home of an evening than did our ancestors of the horse car era a century ago. But the point is that we don't do very much better. In great, great, great grandfather's day, a man could drive his own horse and buggy along a suburban highway at an average speed of 15 miles an hour. It's interesting to compare this with the modern commuter's average speed during the evening rush hour between St. Louis and, say, Kirkwood or Richmond Heights, What we find is that over the past hundred years, we have done a little better, but very little better than simply hold our own. Nowadays, the jet traveler no longer bothers to tell his friends that it took him longer to get his car off the lot and drive to the airport than it did to fly to Chicago. This sort of thing has come to be an accepted fact of travel life in the 1960s, too commonplace to be worth talking about. But... So is the rush hour traffic jam, the bumper-to-bumper accumulation of stopped or slow-moving motor vehicles on Grand at Arsenal or on the Veterans Bridge or on the Daniel Boone Highway at Skinker. This, too, is a part of life in the 20th century. And in his secret heart, every motorist who's driving home alone in a -a one-and-a-half-ton, 18-foot, 250-horsepower automobile knows what's really at the root of the whole frustrating problem. It's not his fault that traffic's jammed. It's simply that there are too many other automobiles on the street. 